Good evening, everyone. It's an honor to be here tonight to introduce you to this year's Spirit Award recipient, my friend, Carl Stimpen. When I learned that Carl was being recognized with the Spirit Award and he wanted me to present this, my first thought was, this is just a way to get me to admit in a room full of 200 people that he's a better golfer than I am. <laughs> I'm not that nice, Carl. That's not going to happen. <laughs> and then when I learned the Spirit Award was presented each year to someone with MS, whose spirit inspires all those around them, I thought I should focus on all the great things that Carl has done for the National MS Society, things that go all the way back to when he was 26 years old and first diagnosed with the disease. <clears throat> Carl was a great skier back then and a great all-around fantastic competitive athlete. It was just a few months after his diagnosis when he saw a poster for the ski-a-thon at Squaw Valley, and we wanted to raise money for the cause. <laughs> He quickly volunteered, and that was the beginning of nearly 30 years of dedication to this cause. Carl was living in San Francisco and got, got involved with the Society's National MS, uh, MS Bike Fundraiser. Soon after, he joined the board and eventually became the chair for the Northern Nevada Eastern California chapter. When the chapter's president left, he agreed to serve as interim president. When Microsoft transferred Carl to Seattle nearly 10 years ago, that's when he and I met. I was trying to start a company team for the Bike MS uh, fundraiser, and Carl stepped right in to help me. And his commitment to this society has continued to grow stronger over the years. He not only continues to co-chair the Microsoft Bike MS team, but he also meets regularly with employees who have been recently diagnosed with MS. And he shares with them his story, and he lets them know that there's help for them and hope. Soon after learning those things, I thought they were all certainly important for a Spirit Award recipient. But then I realized I shouldn't tell you about Carl the man with MS. What I should really tell you about is Carl the man. <clears throat> For 10 years, whether it's at work or on the golf course or having dinner with our wives or traveling the world together on vacation, I've never seen Carl have a bad day. I know he has them, but he never lets others see him down. He's much too focused on finding ways that he can help that he can contribute, that he can find a solution, and then be the first one to volunteer to make that solution work. I personally feel better every time I'm in a room with Carl. I can't remember ever knowing anyone who's more positive and who infects everyone around him with such energy and such a can-do attitude. Many of the things Carl's enjoyed over the years, and he's been good at, have been taken away from him by MS, running, skiing, cycling. I've seen him struggle to do things now that weren't such a struggle when I first met him 10 years ago. But he refuses to sit on the sidelines because he can't do something, because he's not as fast, as strong, or as capable as he used to be. He refuses to complain about what he can't do, and instead tenaciously, fearlessly fights for those things he can do. They say adversity doesn't build character, that it reveals it. And that can't be more true than with Carl. Two years ago, Carl and his wife Cassie and my wife Jessica and I and two other couples picked up a sailboat in the Caribbean and sailed for seven days. One day we landed at a beautiful little island called Meru. And when you pull in and drop the anchor a few yards offshore, there's a long sandy beach. And all the way over here at the end of the beach, there's the last bar before the jungle. Well, Carl couldn't make that walk, but the rest of us took off. <laughs> but instead, Carl plopped himself down by the little public dock. And when we came back, we found Carl happily talking with three new friends, the Allen's kindergarten teacher, Sarah, and her two young daughters. Sarah was saying, Carl, tell me about your life. Carlos, she called him. Carlos, tell me about your travels. Carlos, tell me about MS. I swear, you could leave Carl alone in the middle of a cornfield and he would find somebody to be friends with. <laughs> he can't do everything everyone else does, but he always finds a spot where he can make an impact on others. And he certainly had a more memorable experience sitting on that beach than we had at the bar. The next day, Sarah invited us, all of us up to the kindergarten class to meet her students. And it was about a mile and a half up a long hill. You know, I can still see it. And of course, again, Carl couldn't go, but four of us did. And I'll never forget that place. We had an amazing time in this tiny little schoolroom 
with five-year-old kids. Imagine starched white skirts and press uniforms, and us in sweaty t-shirts and flip-flops. And it was such a joyous day. Carl's generosity of spirit and his genuine interest in Sarah and her life and his ability to find the best way to enjoy a sunny day on a beach when he couldn't be with his friends, all that opened up an unforgettable experience for the rest of us. And that is what exemplifies Carl the man. It's important to realize the wake you leave in life, the things you say and do, the way you approach the hand you're dealt with, even when it's not fair, the impact you have on others. Carl's wake washes over everyone he knows and leaves him feeling joyful and happy and hopeful and honored just to have had a chance to wade in. Carl, you're a true champion of the vision of a world free of MS. You're the best man I know. And you're very deserving of the National MS Society's 2014 Spirit Award. Please help me welcome Carl. Wow. Okay. So it's hard to be humble after such a kind introduction. <laughs> Tom's a very good friend. He's a very good golfer. <laughs> but there's no way I'm going to let up on him on the golf course, no matter how kind he was with his introduction. <laughs> I've lived with MS for nearly 30 years now. As Tom said, I got involved with the National MS Society very soon after I was diagnosed. And it's been one of the most fulfilling honors of my life to serve this cause and to work toward a vision of a world free of MS. Early on, when bike MS was called the MS 150, I cycled those 50 miles and I felt so exhilarated. I loved riding and I felt proud knowing that every mile brought us closer to new treatments, new services, new hope. MS had very little impact on my life during those years. On the few bad days I had, I'd get irritated because I could only ride four miles instead of 10. I was able to remain physically active for about 15 years before my MS finally forced me to look for new ways to make a difference. Today, I'm still co-captain of the Microsoft Bike MS team. I might not be able to ride a bike anymore, but there's so much I can do and so much I feel I must do. I look around this room and I know that there are many of you who are more affected by MS and in far more serious ways than I am. I want to support you and I'm ready to do whatever Patty Shepard Barnes asks of me. <laughs> Because those of you who know Patty, and obviously many of you do, yeah. when Patty asks, you just can't say no. My lovely wife, Kathy, she never knew me before MS. 18 years ago, she took one giant leap of faith to say yes to my marriage proposal when neither of us knew what MS would have in store for us. She likes to say that my optimism and attitude have gotten us through these years and whatever might lie ahead, that my glass is always full. But the truth is, is that Kathy has always been there by my side, filling up that glass with her love and support. My family and friends also fuel my strength. Towns that I don't let my MS stand in the way of enjoying life and he's right. While it might seem odd to say, I truly believe MS has given me more than it's taken away. It's given me the opportunity to feel like I'm making a difference. And it's given me incredible friends like Tom and his wonderful wife, Jessica, who I would never have met if it weren't for my passion for bike MS and the society. 
Thank you, Tom and Jessica, for your friendship and for all you do to try to make life better for everybody who's living with MS. And finally, I'd like to thank all of you. Tonight, through your gifts to the society, you made an investment in my future and the future of every person with MS. I'm deeply honored to expect, accept the Spirit Award and do so on behalf of all of you who lift my spirit with your generosity and support. Thank you.